What's up, Growing Healthy Families crew? Dr. Scott here, guys. And in this episode, I have a special treat for you. I get to interview my lovely wife, Dr. Alina. And I, I'm doing this because this is something that we have been talking about for a long time, is that patients in our office all the time are asking her, how does she juggle all the things that she does? She is a mom. She's a business owner. She is a successful entrepreneur. And she seems like she's really got it all together. And so what she wants to do is share with you what life is really like, what she does, how she manages things she does, what she does well, where there are struggles, so that if you are a mom who feels like you are on the struggle bus and you need some support, some encouragement, and some strategies, then this episode most definitely is for you. And ladies, I will tell you this, from someone who gets to be the husband who watches her every day, she does have a real gift for being able to manage the stress, manage the struggle, and still do an amazing job. So this, the advice that she's going to give today, I think, will give tremendous value to each and every one of you. We'll see you guys on the inside. Welcome to the Growing Healthy Families podcast. We are your hosts, Dr. Scott and Lena Haggerty. Our mission is to provide you with science, health tips, nutrition, and exercise information that you can actually use in your life. We want to make these tips real and applicable, so we will share strategies that we use in our life to grow our healthy family. Hi guys, this is Dr. Scott. And Dr. Lena, in today's episode is dedicated to all those busy moms out there and anyone who takes on that role. And that's exactly how we're going to start off today. So moms, if you're listening to this, I think this episode will give you tremendous value. Uh, the lady I get to sit across here from on these podcasts, Dr. Lena, is a, a, an amazing example of someone who is a, a busy mom, but really does a fantastic job of finding a way to juggle the struggle. So so Dr. Lena, do me a favor. I would love for you just to give the moms who are listening to this an overview of what a day or a week in your life is like right now. Well, I think I'm going to copy your phrase and use it forever because I like it. Juggle the struggle <laughs> because that's how I feel every single day. <laughs> and I bet all of you do too. Um, so life is busy, right? I mean, a lot of moms work now, and even if you don't work outside the home, you are so busy working inside of it. Sometimes I always joke that going to work is a break um, from the job at home, right? And I think a lot of other moms feel the same way because it's different. You get to go to work. You get to talk to adults. You get to use parts of your brain that sometimes you feel like were left behind once you had kids, and so... Um, I think it's actually really, I enjoy it. I think it's really good for me and a lot of other people when you get to change up your environment. But yeah, a normal day is split between time at home and with the kids, time at work, and time just doing busy, busy, busy things, right? Yeah, and I think that's I think that's where a lot of the the women that we know in the practice and people that we talk to always feel like it is that constant grind, constant struggle to try and find a way to go and balance things. And I, I think one of the things that I, I, I respect so much about the way that I have watched you as a as a mom, a business owner, is you find a way to to juggle it all. So everyone I think is is looking for different ways and, and tips to help to try and figure out how do I balance the struggle. So let's start at the top. You have you have multiple aspects of life that you're balancing, right? So you are are balancing being mom, you are a wife. You are an entrepreneur and a business owner, plus you make time for activities and fun and all of those things. At the top of the pyramid for you, what do you feel like is the glue that holds all of that together to, you, to enable you to do the things that you do so well? So if I had one word to summarize how I think it all works, it's organization. I am hyper-organized because I run the schedules for everything and everyone. And at times it can be exhausting, but being organized is ultimately the key of how I make it all work. And I know that that comes naturally for some people and it can be a lot harder for others. So for example, when the school calendar comes out for my kiddos, then I am immediately putting in all the dates into my phone. I have every vacation, every day off, when they start, picture day, 
um, school plays. So I immediately take that and I put it all in. So now I've already got it all there. And that's just an example of how then I'll work through the framework, right? And work through how to set other appointments and how to plan for who needs to be where when. And then as sports practices come up, those go into my calendar with everything else. And then, you know, I start to immediately know if there's going to be conflicts, if there's going to be um, a scheduling issue. And then we have a great big whiteboard at home. And even though I have the phone calendar, and I know you can sync those with family and share them with everyone helping out, I still like a big visual. It's good for the kids to see. I think it's good for Dr. Scott to see. Um, we do have some family we're blessed enough to help with some pickups, and it's good for them to see, for me to see, kind of like a snapshot so you know what you're up against going into the month, right? Because I'm always forward planning and forward thinking. So if I look at the calendar and on there, I will write their sports practices. I will write picture day. I will write family parties and birthdays and um, who's buying lunch when, right? We do that on Sundays. I go through the lunch menu and we establish that right away so we know for the week what we're dealing with. Um, so yeah, if, if, if one word, I would say organization. It is the key to everything. And then I just... Tell people where to be and when to be there. <laughs> <laughs> and she's very good at that part, if I do say so myself. Well, and the other thing that I, I want to interject is I think that one thing that I've also noticed, too, is that in addition to your calendar, you're also constantly creating the task lists um, so that you don't lose track of different items that you're running on a day-to-day -day basis. So can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, that's true. I mean, I know there's a lot of apps out there and a lot of features. I am not tech fancy or savvy <laughs> in any way. I am like allergic to new apps. I don't really like using that stuff. Um, but I just have a simple like list in my phone um, that every little thing I have to do, I put it in. And that can seem daunting to a point. Like I don't put laundry because that's just a given every day in my life, right? Um, but you know, if it's like buy a birthday present for that friend, wrap my own kids presents. Uh, we just got through our daughter's birthday. So that's why top of mind right now, right? Like, you know, order the cake, make the food, buy whatever we need. Um, I put it all in like pickups, um, what needs to be done when. So for example, if I pull up my phone now and I click on the little to-do list and that stuff stays in there, right? And so it's kind of like a, a checks and balances. I can see what's ahead of me and I know what I'm looking at. And then I automatically sometimes know what's already going to get moved. And my goal someday is to not move anything and actually complete an entire day's task list. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes I feel like I add more than I subtract. So, um, for example, I even put like paying the bills in here. Like I literally put a reminder every week so that I can check in and make sure that I get it done. Uh, things like returning library books and um, e even if I have, this will sound silly, like even if I have Kohl's cash, <laughs> right? That Kohl's cash, it just keeps coming and coming no matter what you do. Uh, I'll put a reminder for like when it's going to expire. So that it's in my phone and I know, like, use cash by X date. And I would be lost without my list, but it is super helpful. Yeah, and I think that's an, um, an important thing that you said there because by keeping lists so that you are able to organize things, the one thing I think has been really impressive is that it, it, she really doesn't let anything um, slip by. And I think that's important to keep in mind because, you know, one of the, one of the biggest things that I think that I've observed is that it's the habits. You're super consistent in the habits of tracking and organizing and maintaining your things so that the big and the little things don't seem to slip by. Um, and I think that's important to keep in mind because, you know, even with, even in our practice, we talk a lot about the importance of habits, that the habit formation that it, of just building the lists and maintaining your calendars and all those things has become something that is a part of just who you are and what you do. And I, I've seen how this works. And I can tell you guys firsthand that I have never seen anybody who can as effectively manage the quantity of things that, that Dr. Alina does 
um, without letting one ball after the other drop. She's able to keep track of everything just consistently uh, and juggle things in a way that I think is very unique, which is why we actually wanted to do this episode because so many times I think that it can become daunting and overwhelming. But in reality, one of the biggest things that I think that Dr. Lena mentioned when she said this before is that because she's not a person who goes into a million different apps, she actually simplifies. She keeps things in a very simple tracking order by having her calendars and having detailed lists of the things that she's tracking and then having some visuals so that there's not a million places things are being tracked from. Would you like to add on to something with that, Dr. Lena? I mean, no, just kind of what he's saying. I, um, I use one simple list in my phone. I use the calendar app in my phone and then we have a big calendar at home and that is pretty much it. I don't, um, like things in a lot of different places. To me, that becomes disorganized in my brain, right? I do like things in order. Um, Kids have obviously challenged me to be a little more laid back about, you know, messes and (laughs) stuff being in places, but I'm still pretty orderly. And I think that um, they would probably attest to the same thing. (laughs) I think they very much would. (laughs) But to me, that gives me calm in the chaos, right? So all these little quips today with uh, Dr. Scott's juggle the struggle and then finding order in the chaos. And that is necessary for me. He knows that, you know, if the option is there to like sit on the couch and relax or like organize the coat closet, (laughs) I would rather organize the coat closet. Now, I realize that that's my own sickness to deal with. Um, but organization gives me calm and it gives me peace and it makes me happy because then I feel like life is in order, right? It's something I can control that helps me feel like everything is not everywhere. Makes sense. And, and I think this is probably something a lot of people struggle with is trying to find a way to go and balance all of these things and keep things um, organized. And I think that the tips that you've given, I think, should be um, you know, taking the heart and trying to find your own system because, you know, what works for Dr. Lena is going to be individual for Dr. Lena. But I think when you look at the, the framework, it's the fact that you have to find an organizational system that fits for who you are. And the biggest thing to take from this is that, you know, the, the system that works for her may not work for you, but there is going to be a system and it's finding ways to go and balance out, um, the management of the calendars and the schedules that will help when it comes to so many things as your complexity of your family's life gets bigger. And that's the biggest challenge, I think, is is finding a way to track it all, finding a way to manage it all and keep it organized so that things like, you know, how many how many uh, lunches does your child have left on their school account have before they're running out? Simple little things like that, right? <laughs> Very funny. I do actually track that on the big white calendar. But again, it just helps me, right? So whatever helps you is what you need to do. I do write how much money I, I put on money, you know, so much at a time on their accounts. And so when I write down who buys lunch, when I go to change over the calendar every month, I do count up how many each child has. I subtract it from how many I put on. And then I know when they're about to run out of money. Right. And it takes, you know, all this sounds like it does not take long. It takes like two minutes to go ahead and do that. But I have a reminder in my phone at the beginning of every month to update the wall calendar because otherwise you'll get busy and you might forget. And then it'll be June and you're looking at April. And I know how that goes. <laughs> so I have a reminder to update the calendar. And then I take a few minutes to just go through my phone. And then put up on the board all the appointments, every you know, all of the sports practices, any family activities, whatever it may be. And then I also do like count up the lunches and put days off of school and stuff like that. So at a quick glance, I have a really good idea of what the month looks like, what we're going into. On a Tuesday today, I can look ahead and look at the weekend. And I kind of know what that looks like. So I know if we have free time or as things are popping up, if there's things to get the kids to. Um, So like Dr. Scott said, I think it is really important that you find what works for you, your own style, your own way, your own system of organization. But there is something to be said for having a consistent routine that you can rely on because then it just becomes a habit. And I think you'll find it brings a lot of peace to take the 
five minutes or the 10 minutes to put some of these things in place at a time, but then you can rely on them. And you know that when you're going to schedule things or do things, you can be confident because you have it all in there and you know what you're working with. Couldn't agree more. So Dr. Lena, I, I want to switch gears because, you know, in the midst of all the things that you juggle and um, having so many different balls in the air at all times, one of the things that you consistently make time for is self-care. And I think this is something where I find that a lot of moms in particular struggle. And, and part of the reason I think is because moms by nature are giving, they're sacrificing, and they feel like that they're the ones who are going to have to give so that everybody else can be taken care of. But I find with, with the way that you live your life, you really have found a way to fit in time for self-care um, in a way that it fits within your life, but at the same time, not sacrificing your family time and other things. So share with the listeners, um, number one, your perspective on self-care, and number two, how you find a way to make it work in your own life. So self-care is really important. You know, I am blessed that my husband, Dr. Scott, is very supportive. And so, you know, he puts the same level of importance on that that I do. And that, of course, is helpful. And I know that not everybody is in that same situation. But I would encourage you, you know, it may not look like what it looked like before you had kids. I know it doesn't for me. You know, I had to accept the fact that that time, that amount of time is just not there. And so it changes. And that doesn't mean that it's still not important, but that also doesn't mean that what you're doing is not still effective. I just don't have, you know, two hours a day to give anymore or two workouts a day <laughs> um, into our schedule. But for me, and again, this is how, how I am, um, mornings are when I like to work out. So when I wake up, first thing, before I do anything, before I get into the day, before I've showered, it's a wake up and do it. Because I have found in my experience that once the day goes, it runs away from you. And you're like, okay, I'm just going to do this thing. I'm just going to do these emails. I'm just going to put in this load of laundry. I'm just going to clean these dishes. I'm just going to run this errand and then I'll come back. But it just never seems to work out that way because something else comes up and something else comes up and then you forgot about that other thing you had to do. And then before you know it, the kids are coming home from school and then there's homework and there's dinner and there's practices and there's everything that comes with it. So morning time to me is, is my best time. And it honestly helps get me ready for the day. I feel better for the day. I have more energy for the day. It's quiet. It's my time. You know, even if it's just 30 minutes, you know, some days it's 30, 40 minutes nowadays, but it's enough to get the body moving, the blood flowing, the mind clear, and just take that time for yourself, whether it's cardio, yoga, you know, strength training, meditation, whatever it may be having those moments, those 30 minutes, those 40 minutes, I think they really change your outlook on the day. They change your mood. They change how you see everything. I feel like I have more energy. I can be more productive. And I don't feel guilty all day that I skipped over trying to do something for myself or to take care of myself. Because ultimately, I'm better for all of them when I feel better and when I take care of myself. So it may not be what it used to be and it may not be what you want it to be, but I really think it's important that you find that time for something, whether it's the 15 minutes, 30 minutes, some days maybe you'll get 60 and that that's a good day, right? That's a really good day. Um, but just something for yourself because you can't pour from an empty cup, meaning you can't be there for everyone else if you're not there for yourself first. And that's really, really important to not forget because if you let all that go, then you're not happy. You don't feel well. You're not who you need to be to take care of all of these other people. Ladies, I think that was just absolutely like mic drop gold. We can stop the episode right here if we really wanted to because I think that's so critical. Um, the, the phrase you can't pour from an empty cup is probably one of the best things you could have ever said because 
you know, we find so often that, that women are pulled in so many different directions. Moms are pulled in so many different directions that you are first to, uh, to drop self-care for yourself because you feel like you've got to be responsible to everybody else. But I think that's important that you keep that analogy in mind because, you know, one of the things that I think you have to really kind of prioritize, you have to prioritize yourself. You know, it's the, it's that, you know, the old mantra on an airplane, right? You have to go and put the, the oxygen mask on yourself before anybody else because if you, can't, if you can't take care of yourself, you can't take care of others. And that's something that I think you'll find that when you start to prioritize yourself and your health and taking time for you, you'll find that you feel better. And I, I know, I've watched Dr. Lena with this. Like, it makes a huge difference in quality of life um, because it is her time. And I think that it's critical that that every mom is able to to find, even if it's a small amount of time for yourself, so that you can just take a little time to focus on you and your well being. Now, now, Doctor Lena, you know, obviously dealing with the things that you do and so many different uh, balls in the air at all times, I know this can create a tremendous amount of stress. So, knowing that stress is going to be ever present, what are some of the things that you like to do to manage your stress levels? You know, I guess I never really think about it quite like that, you know, because you sort of evolve into life, right? Like you have jobs and then you get married and then you have one kid and then another. And for some people, another and another and another. And so all of a sudden one day, I think you look back and you're like, wow, life is really different than what it used to be. So, um, but now that we're thinking about it or talking about it, I mean, number one thing, obviously, is the whole taking care of yourself, right? Like for me, it's having some time to exercise and, you know, feel like, you know, I'm doing something to better myself. I like the challenge. Um, I personally use like Peloton for the last couple years, which I love. You know, I have instructors that I really enjoy. It's like going to a private class in my basement and uh, they're motivational too. They're very positive. They're very uplifting. They're, you know, you didn't wake up just to give up. And so I, I love that. <laughs> I'm like, no, I didn't. I did not wake up to give up. I can do it. <laughs> and so um, they're motivational and they're positive. And that helps, you know, it pushes me. You never think that a TV screen could push you, but it does. And so you know, from my former days in athletics and things, I love, you know, feeling like I can be pushed and, and, or doing the yoga and feeling like my body's loosening up and my mind is clear. So I think all of that helps stress a ton. You know, I mean, that's such a big key in so many areas. And then obviously, you know, trying to eat well, that one's always a bigger struggle than the exercise. It's easy to, it's easy to, to do the work. It's a lot harder to see what you put in your mouth. That's always been true. Um, but obviously those things come into play with managing stress and then just staying organized. Like I think what I started with is that that helps a ton, um, to manage everything because I don't feel like I have no idea what's going to happen next. And then of course, I mean, my number one is I get adjusted. Um, and that is key taking care of my nervous system, which helps take care of my brain and my body, how I feel, how I perform, how I can think. So getting adjusted has been, you know, life changing for me over the years. And, um, I honestly don't know what I would do without it. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that a lot of times that that's something that most people don't put into the equation when they think about like stress management. But I think that's probably something if you've never gotten adjusted before, um, definitely check it out because, you know, moms, if you are not a current chiropractic patient someplace, check it out. The, one of the cool, profound effects that it has is on stress. Um, and if you look at just some of the, just some of the, you know, evidence and the research that's been put out there over the last few years, the most profound impacts they're showing is on what's called heart rate variability, which is your brain's ability to handle the stress that you're under. So, uh, so if you've not added that into your regimen, I strongly encourage you to. Well, and it's interesting, you know, we're talking about this and I think about patients who come into our practice all the time and they're like, everyone here is always so happy. Like, 
is everybody so happy all the time? Everybody's so positive. And yes, you know, Dr. Scott and myself and our team, we do love what we do. And we have amazing patients and we love them so much. They're like our family. And so obviously that is part of it. I mean, we just are happy to be serving and caring for others because we love it. It's a part of who we are. But I think the other key piece to that, and it's what used to make me start to reflect on it, is that we all get adjusted and on a regular schedule. And I tell people all the time, I don't know that my stress would be as low as it is if that was not the case. Because when I start listing stuff off, right, like running the business and managing the operations and the kids and the home and family and all these things, I was like, why am I so calm? Like, I should not be this calm. (laughs) And so um, it's definitely a huge component of managing that for all of us, I think. All of us who work there, all of us who are with the patients every day, I think it's a big part that people don't always realize. I couldn't agree more. I don't know what I would do if I wasn't getting adjusted on a regular basis because I know it was like before I got adjusted and I was a stressed out mess. So it was uh, the biggest single thing that that definitely got my stress levels to a place where I could live with the stress that I was dealing with and it not really overtake me. So- I, would, I would say it just helps you manage life better. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit of a hack that if you've not tried it, add it into your regimen and then send us a message and just let us know how much it's impacted you because I think you'll be surprised at the impact that it'll have on your quality of life. So, uh, Dr. Lena, I want, to, um, I want to switch gears because, you know, you do make it look pretty easy. And, you, you, you know, you run things so seamlessly from the outside. But many people oftentimes don't realize that there are areas where we all feel like we are having challenges or struggles. So where do you feel like some of the areas that you have struggles are right now when it comes to juggling things, whether even if the things are doing well, places where you feel like um, they take the most effort for you or you feel like you have a hard time juggling everything? So, I mean, obviously, if I had to pick one word that's my biggest struggle, it's time, right? And I think that's true for a lot of us. Like there's just not enough time. And I'm so glad that we just lost another hour of it this weekend Um, (laughs) because who has time for that? (laughs) Like, I don't have time to lose an hour. So time is a huge struggle, right? It's the one thing you can't buy. It's the one thing you can't change. It just is what it is. And so oftentimes I find that that is difficult to overcome. Um, And honestly, it might sound a little cliche, but... The whole part I started with about organization, I feel like my biggest struggle comes when I feel like I can't even get a handle on things to get them organized. So when I feel like everything is out of order or disorderly or chaotic, then that is where my biggest struggle will come. Like sometimes like not knowing where to start, like where do I even okay, like (laughs) what's next? You know, just feeling that overwhelm, that feeling of overwhelm that I think a lot of us feel all the time and it can creep up on you. So I think that's the biggest struggle is sometimes I just, you feel like you have so many things to do. You don't know where to begin. And so you don't begin anywhere. You just kind of throw your hands in the air. Well, you know, Dr. Lena, I, I, I know you said that, but I've also watched you over the years. And I know there's the moments of frustration, but I also watch you regroup. And I, I watch you come back and figure out ways to tackle whatever comes your way, no matter how big the issue is. So in your mind, what are some of the things that you do to help you to regroup when you have a big stressor? Like what are what is the process that you run through in your mind to help you to get back on track so that when there's a lot of things and a lot of big stuff that you are, are able to regroup and put it back together when you've stepped away from the stress for a moment? What are some things you do? I totally put her on the spot here, by the way, guys, because I know this, I knew this would be one that would be difficult because I've, I've had the privilege, right? And I say this privilege because this is not how my mind works, right? Dr. Lena has a very different mind than I do. She's far more organized than I am, but I've been able to watch her in the midst of the most stressful situations that we've gone through over the course of our 20 years together to be able to step away for a moment, 
reassess the situation and then start to break it into pieces and parts. Um, and I don't think sometimes she even realizes the way that she approaches things, but one of the gifts I think that she has, and this is why I wanted to share this with you, is that she's able to look at situations, sometimes from a distance, and then come back and figure out a plan of attack to start to make things manageable again. So, so what would you say would be some key things when stress feels big, a situation feels overwhelming, to help somebody when life feels like it is just chaotic, right? What would be some of the things that you would do when those moments hit to help you to get back in charge, to get back in focus, and to start to take the situation back? So honestly, sometimes I think it's a matter of needing to feel success, right? Um, it's true in a lot of things. They say that in sports, you need to learn how to win. You need to see what that feels like. It's the same principle of like, you know, when they tell you to, you know, pay pay off the small bill first because you'll feel the win. Um I guess I kind of, you know, now that he's making me reflect on this right now, I guess I kind of do that. I go to my list and I'm like, you know, I sit down and say, okay, what can I accomplish right now? Like, what's the low hanging fruit? What's the thing that I know I can get done? Um, and then sometimes that, that actually helps give me clarity. I'm like, okay, like that one's off the list, check. And then you kind of get in a groove and you get a different focus. So getting done what I can get done actually helps me because it comes back to that organization to me is calm, right? So, so having things laid out, having things not so disorderly brings me peace and it makes my mind open. So checking a thing or two off the list that's easy is actually what helps me or the other thing I think that sometimes I'll do is I just step away from it entirely. Like, and this will sound super fun, ladies. I go fold the laundry <laughs> because that is a thoughtless task. <laughs> um, I folded those shirts so many times. I think they could fold themselves. <laughs> so, so I'll go step away and I'll still try to be productive because again, for me, productivity, you know, brings me peace. Um, let that be another one today. Productivity brings peace. I see t-shirts <laughs> coming, ladies. Um, but it, it, but it does, you know. And so I might step away and go fold some laundry, right, and put some show on the on a recording and just start folding laundry. It's productive, right? It's getting a task done, but it's not complicated. It's not hard. It's nothing I have to figure out. And so then you're like, okay, like that's off the list, and that was something, and. Some days, you know, I just, you know, because running a business, there's a lot of pieces and parts to that. And some days I just have to accept that it's going to be a different kind of day, in all honesty, because my mind just isn't, isn't there for the complicated, you know? And so I accept that. And then I say, okay, like, what other things can I focus on today? Or what else do I have to bring to the table today? Because some days are going to be amazing days, like, so productive. You just feel like you are on fire. Like you can own the world. And other days you're like, okay, so it would be a great Netflix and chill day. That's not an option. <laughs> but what, what kind of day can it be? Is it a day to just try to get yourself organized? Is it a day to just do some of those simpler tasks if they're around the house or go grocery shopping or, you know, or is it a day that you just need a little bit more self-care? And you say, I'm going to take, you know, an hour to work out if you if you're blessed to have that time or, you know, 30 minutes to meditate. Um, do you just need to get out of the house for a little while, take a walk? So, you know, there's all different ways. It depends what the struggle is and and what you feel like that day. I think your body also has a way of telling you that sometimes you really do just need to sit down and rest for a little while. Maybe you do need to sit with the kids and watch that TV show or you know, make that dessert or whatever the case may be. Yeah, I think that's, I think it's profound advice. And I want to take a, take a, a takeaway from that, from what I heard. I think one of the biggest overarching themes is that you are going to have to look at your day and, and understand energy management and the fact that some days you've got more to give than others. And it's make the most of what you have to give on that day instead of thinking that every day 
has to be a max performance day. Nobody has that in them. It's not realistic, right? And anybody who who's a guru who you hear online who says that, oh, every day I slay the day. Well, I, I disagree. I think that everybody has ups and downs. And if you look behind the curtains of the people who on social media look like they've got it all together all the time, when you get to know them, most of them are their own train wrecks where they've got their own baggage. But what they do is they find ways to hold it together and work through the day to be productive. So it's not about the comparison game. It's about finding the ways to be as effective and as productive with the time that you have and the energy that you have and the stress that you have to make the best of the day with what you have to give on that day. Would you agree with that? Oh, a hundred percent. And I'll give you a work example too, right? So I run all the operations of the business and, um, there are days that I've either, you know, I've just, I'm fried for that day or, I'm just not in the right frame of mind for whatever that thing is that I have to get done in that moment. Um, And I always call that uh, patient relations day (laughs) or patient relations hour for myself. You know, obviously being with the patients and seeing them and talking with them is my absolute most favorite thing to do. I just don't always have a lot of time um, every day to do that. But there are some days that in our practice, I'll be out more than others. Because that's one of those days that I'm like, okay, I'm not really up for whatever this really complicated thing is the accountant wants me to do right now. Um, but Jason, we love you. <laughs> um, but it might be a day that, you know, I'm like, yes, like I want to see so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so. And um, I absolutely love that. That that actually fills my cup. And that brings me so much joy is being around other people and, you know, trying to pour into them. So it's super valuable, right? And it's an amazing thing to do. So it's not like it's unproductive. It's it's amazing and it's great and it's so valuable for all of us. Um, but it's just an example of how, you know, even if I'm not doing this like super hard task, there's still other ways and other things you can do that are still really valuable, even if you don't always realize it. And then from a home standpoint, you know, it's kind of the same principle, like maybe that home day isn't going to be accomplishing, you know, cleaning out the refrigerator and cleaning out the kids' rooms and, you know, emptying out the basement and whatever the case may be. But maybe it's just a day that you're like, okay, kids, I'm going to do some laundry, but I'm going to hang out with you. We're going to play a game. We're going to eat dinner together. You know, maybe it's just a day of family time because still really, really, really important, the most important thing you can put your time into. And it's okay if that dish didn't get done and, you know, that dresser didn't get dusted. That's okay. And it's okay to be okay with that. It's not going anywhere, is it? (laughs) Sure isn't. (laughs) So, Dr. Lena, there are probably more than a few moms that are going to listen to this that may be living in the midst of the struggle, who feel overwhelmed, who, um, who feel like sometimes things have just gotten away from them, who feel like um, they're just having a hard time juggling the struggle. So what would you say to them, some words of encouragement, help, support, that they may need to hear right now so that they can feel like they can get themselves on that road to feeling like they're making their impact and getting in control and, and doing the things they need to to start taking back control? Probably the biggest thing to remember is just that you are enough. Like you're doing amazing and you're incredible and, you know, nothing goes unnoticed. And I'm sure that you are so appreciated and so valuable in your family. But just knowing that give yourself some grace, like give yourself some room to not be superwoman every single day. And know that you are always trying your best and that it's not selfish to make a little time for yourself, that, you know, it's not selfish to want 10 minutes of peace and quiet. It's amazing, actually, is what it is. (laughs) Um, But that, you know, you're just, it's a big job. It's a tough job. And everyone's situation is going to be different and everyone's... um, you know, ability to, to organize and manage and, 
have help or not have help is all going to be different, right? So it's finding your own way, finding what is going to work for you and your family because there is no right or wrong. You know, I've given you ideas today about what I do and what works for me, and that may be amazing for some people, and others may have to, you know, alter that a little bit. But just finding your routine, finding what works for you, and just knowing that every day we put one foot in front of the other, but that it's okay to give yourself a break, it's okay to need a few minutes to yourself, that you're giving everything you have, but you need to make sure you give to yourself first. Otherwise, you're going to burn out, you're going to be tired. I mean, we're going to be tired anyway. <laughs> but you're going to be even more tired. You know, you run the risk of getting sick and overwhelmed. And then you're frustrated. And so um, just remember to, you know, give yourself some grace. Give yourself room to be human because we are, even though sometimes it doesn't feel like it. And um, that, you know, you're doing a great job. And the kids are going to be great, and they're going to be okay. And uh, perspective, you know, is everything. Awesome. So I, I think, I think moms, I think that Dr. Lena has dropped serious value bombs today. Um, and I hope that this gives you encouragement. I hope this gives you an understanding that um, even when someone from the outside appears to have it all together, there's going to be struggles. There's going to be challenges. But there are things that we all can do. Um, to find ways to to have some some control and to build habits and routines. And I think that Dr. Lena really did a great job of taking a lot of the big struggles and making them smaller into things that you can use that are very tangible. Now, what I would love for each of you to do today is, um, number one, wherever you're listening to this, give us some feedback. Tell us what your thoughts are. Um, what are your takeaways? What are your struggles? What are the things that you would like to learn more about? Because I know Dr. Lena talked about a number of different things that she does to go and manage the complexities of her life. Where do you struggle? Wherever you're listening to this, whether it's on Apple, Spotify, um, you're on our Facebook page, wherever, drop your comment and let us know what your challenges are, what your strategies are. Because the biggest thing that we can do is we can all help moms all grow together. And so I think this would be a great place for us to continue that conversation so that we can encourage and inspire more women who are out there living through the struggle each day. Dr. Dr. Lena, any other value bombs you would like to drop before we end today? So ladies, I hope that this was helpful today. I hope that it gives you some um, encouragement and knowing that you are not alone. You know, we are truly all in this together. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't, you know, and it doesn't have to be your family. It can be close friends. It can be, you know, people at church. It can be other groups that you're a part of. I mean, there are people out there that want to support you. We want to support you. So if you have questions, if you have concerns, if you have stories, if you have struggles and you want to write into us and share them with us and if there's any way that I can help, you know, I'd be happy to get back on and we'll talk some more about other things that you ladies would like to hear more about or just to know that, you know, you're not alone and that you're doing amazing and that there is nothing easy about being a mom, right, or, or a mom-like figure. And uh, we always joke that there's a reason God had women have babies. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> um, but I also know that moms take on that that like head hierarchy role, right? You just, you're the one always worrying about all the things. It's like, you know, what's coming up ahead. You know how much there is and you tend to be the organizer in the family. So the more you can get yourself situated, I think the more peace you'll find and the more you can, can help everybody else and be there for them. So remember to take care of yourself, be there for yourself first, and then you can be there for everyone else. So share with us. We'd love to hear what you have to say, and we'll talk to you soon. Awesome. Thank you, Dr. Lena. And ladies, we do want to hear from you. So in the show notes, um, go to the homepage for the, the, the podcast, and there will be a section in there where you can actually send us a voice message. If you have a specific question that you would like Dr. Lena to answer in a follow-up ep episode, click the voice message link and record your request or your request for Dr. Lena. And we, if we select yours, it'll be used in a future podcast episode. All right. So God bless you guys. Thank you so much for being with us today. And we'll see you on the next one. Have a great day, ladies. Thank you for listening to the Growing Healthy Families podcast. 
make sure to rate and review this podcast wherever you're listening to it so that we can help to spread this message of health and wellness and all kinds of great, amazing content to the world. We love you guys. We'll see you in the next episodes.